The following podcast is a Sempronto Media production. Hey guys, I'm so excited to introduce you to my next guest. Her name is Lori Lewis, and she has changed the lives of thousands through her pack her practice of coaching of intermittent fasting. And so today our title is how fasting can help you lose weight, even in pre-menopause and post-menopause. So Lori, tell everyone a little bit about your story. Hi, Chantel. It's great to finally meet you. I've been a fan for years and I, your story and your podcast and your conversation have really helped me along my journey. So thank you. I dove in deep into as every time it was meal time, I used that time to learn more. So thank you for inspiring me along the way. Uh, three and a half years ago, I had been in menopause for four and a half years. I was 44. I'm, I'm sorry. I was 54. I'm 57 now. And, um, I had really been suffering because I gained 50 pounds the minute menopause hit. It was, it was inexplicable. It was sudden and it was strong. It just came on and I knew it was hormonal, but I didn't know what to do about it. There was nothing that I did that made a difference. I was a runner. I was, everybody said, how could you get, gained so much weight. You're the healthiest eater we know. So I'd been studying nutrition for over 20 years. I have a health coach certification from the Institute for Integrative Nutrition, just as a personal passion. So how could this 50 pounds hit me so suddenly and so hard and then not be able to do anything about it? So I lived in New York at the time. I lived in New York for 25 years and I went home to Colorado where I grew up. And when I arrived at home, my mom said, let's use this time that you're here to turn the weight around. Now, does anybody want to hear that from their mother? No, <laughs> especially their mother who weighed 120 pounds without ever gaining any weight ever through her whole life and menopause. So I wailed and cried and I was like, like, you think I haven't been doing anything? Like I haven't been trying hard? Like, you know, it menopause was easy for you. Your body cooperated. Mine is clearly not. So I wailed and cried and moaned and she listened. And then she said, okay, let's pray for an answer. And I said, let's do that because clearly one has not come yet. (laughs) I don't know what to do. So I went upstairs in her house and it was bedtime and I crawled in bed with my computer as always and Googled something like, you know, stubborn hormonal menopausal fat won't budge, help me. And up popped these two words that I'd never heard before, intermittent fasting. And I was familiar with long-term therapeutic fasting. I'd read Upton Sinclair's book from 1911 called The Fasting Cure. So I was interested in this idea that fasting puts a body in a state of repair and healing, but I had no idea you could do it every day. So I stayed up all night long watching videos, Diane Parham, Jason Fung, like all the videos, Dr. Eric Berg, and um, stumbled downstairs in the morning and I said, thank you for your prayers, we may have an answer. I'm going to try this crazy thing where I stop eating and then I eat and I stop eating and then I eat. And she said, that sounds great. How may I support you? So I was off and running that very day. And um, as I said, I immersed myself in the knowledge and um, that really fueled me. And my weight loss was steady and, um, It took 15 months to lose 51 pounds. So some people think, gosh, it's so slow. Well, you know, about a a little less than a pound a week, sometimes more, sometimes less. I had a big, long stall on the scale, like five month stall on the scale, but I got two sizes smaller, but the scale had stabilized. So I was shrinking. And um, I think that amount of time, 15 months was exactly the healing that I needed. So I've been in maintenance two years now and um, have a thriving coaching business where I get to help other people. (laughs) So that is so awesome. I love it. Well, you look amazing. Thank you. You look fantastic. Um, So let's just talk about hormones in your body. I mean, obviously we've got, you know, over 50 hormones in our body, insulin, cortisol, ghrelin, leptin. I mean, there's so many. (laughs) 
so many. And it's like, it's, it's like thinking about balancing all of them. Right. So let's, and insulin is such a big one. I mean, I think it's, you know, I think it's the grandmother of them all. (laughs) Grandmother of them all. Yeah. I actually just, I'm so excited about something that I got. Um, it's a continuous blood glucose monitor. So I have it in my stomach right now. It's super oh, in your easy. stomach. I did mine on my arm. Okay, tell me more about yeah. it. Come here. So, you know, you you have to get a a prescription for this. Yes. And so you've got to get a doctor to give it to you. Most insurances won't pay for it if you don't have any, you know, prior. So like for me, I my blood sugar's always been fine. So it's not been great, but it's been fine and so yeah it's stable and so yeah so you get to see it all the time so here's mine like right now my blood sugar is at 74 but I literally just like watch this thing all day long I'm actually right now it's awesome it's the best thing like to me if I will I'm going to put out some more information on how to get one easier there's an easier way and so if you go to chantelrayway.com um, slash glucose, I will put out how to get one and all of the information on how to get this done, but it is one of the best things I've ever done, but to keep so that insulin, yes, keeping your insulin is what really can balance. Like you said, it's the grandmother, your insulin is your grandmother of your hormones. And so if you are going through premenopause or postmenopause or menopause, um, it can you know, keeping your insulin low for, you know, when you're fasting for 12 to 36 hours, you know, that it, that's how you can tap into your fat stores for energy. You can increase your H, HGH. There's so many things mm-hmm. that can happen. So let's talk about your personal story. What, what happened? What does your a day look like in the life of you? Well, a day in the life of me before all this went down was, as I said, I was strong and lean and sharp. I lived in New York City. I worked around, I volunteered, I ran a company. I mean, I was super busy. And the first signs of perimenopause hit when I was 44. I woke up in the middle of the night and the thought I had in my kind of delirium, sleepy delirium was, man, my air conditioner must be broken. I need a new air conditioner. Well, was nothing wrong with the air conditioner. It was me <laughs> putting off a lot of heat. And very quickly, I suddenly started getting hot flashes about every 45 minutes. That is brutal. I mean, it's like a burning ember that starts to flame upwards and start to sweat and it lasts anywhere between five minutes and 20 minutes and then it comes again. So I was off and running. I'd also never had a day of depression in my life where I just wanted to stay under the covers and never come out. And it was my brother who said to me, Laurie, isn't depression kind of part of menopause? So all that's to say that we kind of, there's some of these things that we hear about when we're younger and some of them come as a complete surprise, but they don't send us to biology class for older ladies. All of it is a surprise. And then the word menopause is a big secret. We're supposed to whisper it, not really talk about it. And then we go to our doctors and say, I'm really whacked out here. I need some help. And they just placate us and make us feel even crazier. So I felt strong and lean, except this perimenopause crept up on me. And um, what I, the, the other big thing that I experienced right at this time at 47 years old was I had a major adrenal crash. So a lot of people say adrenal fatigue isn't real. <laughs> Let me tell you, if, for everybody out there who's like, yeah, it's real. So they, in the medical community, they might not say it's real because there's not a prescription drug to solve it or cure it, but it is very real. So perimenopause was coming on. I completely had this adrenal crash. Menopause hit and I gained 50 pounds. So <laughs> it's all hormonal, as you said. I mean, it's it's estrogen, progesterone, testosterone, cortisol, insulin, HGH. I mean, it's just there. I used to always say, as you just did, that there are over 50 hormones. I saw a documentary recently that said they keep discovering new ones and now they think they're over 80. So, and they're all in this hierarchy. There's just like this spider web 
of communication in a particular hierarchy. And if one is off, that makes all the other ones off. So what I discovered with my intermittent fasting practice is that by pausing and putting my body in a condition of repair every day, that those hormones started to communicate effectively with one another in the way that they're designed to work. And insulin being the one that regulates blood sugar and then our fat storage. So it, 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 if people aren't interested in all these complexities, you don't have to be. I happen to be, you happen to be. But for most people, they're just like, just give me the bare bones of how it works. Fast, keep insulin low, tap into your fat stores. End of story. It's like, you don't like things. What that hot that hot flashes? Let's explain to people what, what's happening oh. in the body. What's causing the hot flashes? Well, remember, I'm not a doctor, but it's an imbalance of estrogen and progesterone. So progesterone is an anti-anxiety hormone that helps with how the brain works. And when progesterone tanks, that's what causes it. It's, it's basically the imbalance of estrogen and progesterone and cortisol and insulin that cause this whole ripple effect of hot flashes and incontinence and depression and sleeplessness and mood swings and lack of focus and brain fog and memory loss. And I mean, the list is long. It's frozen shoulder. Hits women over 40 where literally your shoulder locks up and doctors don't understand why, but it's totally hormonal. One of my shoulders locked up for about a year. Then it migrated to the other shoulder then it migrated back and then it went away. It's all hormonal. Don't let anyone tell you you need surgery for a frozen shoulder because it just goes away and it's hormonal and it's mysterious. So all of these things where women in their forties are on the threshold of a big change. And in many cultures, the ancient cultures throughout time, this time of menopause has been considered one of awakening coming into your womanhood. But in our culture, it happens to be like a washed up, it's all downhill from here, your body is broken, go away. And I'm not buying into it. <laughs> so yeah, that's I've, all I know about how how the hot flashes. It's an imbalance of progesterone. Yeah, and, and I've heard that it basically occurs when the when you have a decreased estrogen level, it causes your body's thermostat, which is your hypothalamus, to become more sensitive to slight changes in your body temperature. And when the hypothalamus thinks your body's too warm, it starts a chain of events, which is like a hot flash to kind of cool you down. But yeah, it's definitely yes. your estrogen. Well level, said. Yeah, your estrogen levels kind of is is really the biggest thing that causes it. All. Obviously, also, if you've got problems with your thyroid and that kind of messes with it. So as far as, you know, progesterone, I've got some right here. Do you, you know, do you kind of, do you use progesterone cream at all? Did you use any? Did you take any hormones and did you kind of go to a compound pharmacy or just buy some on Amazon? What what did you do? Well, I did try a progesterone cream. I didn't feel a difference. I, Chantel, I, you know, this, I don't know if this sounds crazy. Somehow I knew that my body would balance itself out. It's designed to balance itself out. That could sound like a pipe dream or hopeful or, you know, uh, silly, like silliness. But I, my intuition, my gut told me that there was an answer. And so all of my hormonal imbalances were repaired, fixed from intermittent fasting alone. So I didn't ever take any bioidenticals or any hormone replacement. Now, I'm not saying that you shouldn't. I, I, mean, I have so many friends who are intermittent fasters and, and clients also who are intermittent fasters, and they're experimenting with their doctors about the level of progesterone and estrogen and testosterone and getting those balances right so that you can sleep well and enjoy sex and, and feel a more youthful, juicy, clear feeling. But for me, intermittent fasting did it almost immediately, almost immediately. It That's all balanced awesome. out. So let's talk about your four hour window, how you go about yeah. doing it. 
talk about exactly what do you eat kind of in a day and what does that look like? Okay, so I subscribe to the Jen Stevens delay don't deny idea of eat what you want, except people think that means you, any person can eat anything and everything, which so it deserves a little asterisk a caveat, which is eat what you want. So when people ask me, do you eat what you want? My answer is yes, I do. But it's been 20 years of me figuring out what foods serve me. So if, if I were to list the foods I eat and the foods I don't eat and tell everyone you have to eat just like me, that would be bizarre because here are the things that I've learned do not work at all for my body. I don't eat any soy products. I don't eat black beans, quinoa, green tea, sugar. Uh, you know, so there's, so people are like, you don't eat sugar. So is that the secret? You don't eat soy. Is that the secret? No. <laughs> <laughs> for my body. So I quit sugar 20 years ago. I stopped drinking soda and cut out the sugar. I started eating tons and tons of bitter leafy greens. That actually helped me make the transition. I love bitter foods. I do not like sweet things. So does that mean everyone has to be like me? No, it's just that's what I do. So that's part of the confusion that I and others had when I gained this 50 pounds. It's like you've been paying close attention to nutrition for over 20 years, how could this imbalance happen to you? So in my four hour eating window, one of the things I learned was I started with eight hours and very quickly I was like eight hours. That's like, it's just easy, was easy to go to six. And then someone challenged me. This was about six weeks into my intermittent fasting journey. Someone challenged me to try a 20 hour fast. And I was like, oh, that extra two hours sounds so hard. <laughs> and so I did a push to 20. And then I did it a few times. And I, then I settled back to 18 and I felt like, see, people are like, how do you know? It's experimentation. You find your groove. You like settle in. It's like, where does the needle settle back? Where do the scales settle? And um, so I realized that a four hour eating window was plenty of time for my body to get lots of nutritious, delicious food. It's an enjoyable length of time, span of time. And um, it also allows for me to get extra hours of fat burning and autophagy and ramped up human growth hormone, HGH, which builds our muscles and our bones. So 20 and four was my, is my jam. And so I started that first week when I started 20 consistently, I remember making latkes for myself, potato pancakes, and I, I was so excited to eat them. And they were all crispy with potatoes from the farmer's market. And I ate them and I, they literally put me to sleep like a sleeping drug. I couldn't even keep my eyes open. And then someone said to me, you might not want to open your eating window with a carb heavy situation because it can be sleep inducing. So I was like, okay, what should I do? So I started opening my eating window with fat. Now, does that work for everybody? No. I, you know, my friend Becky loves opening your eating window with a big salad and a soup or something, but I eat a few olives, always green olives. I have these little packets of olives from Trader Joe's or in a little pack and uh, there's- I don't like well olives. There. You don't like olives? Okay. Good. What would so, be another, so if I if I, another if fat they say like, I don't like olives, what would you say they would open up with? Have open up an avocado, have a, a hard boiled egg, an avocado, um, some nuts. I can't open my eating window. Oh, another thing I can't eat are cashews. Oh, oh my gosh, they hurt my stomach so badly. So, and I would never open my eating window with nuts. Other people, that's their thing. They're like a handful of almonds or pistachios. Yum, yum. Nope, not me. <laughs> so you got to approach each day as an intermittent faster with your fasting and your eating window as if you're a scientist, like it's a fun experiment and you're just discovering. So in my coaching, one of the biggest things I work with people on is a shift of mindset. You're not bad. You're not wrong. You didn't fail. You didn't screw up. You didn't, the day is not you know lost. <laughs> so that um, if I can approach it like, oh, this is fun and lean in with curiosity and what am I going to discover today? So I open with my fat snack, I call it. <laughs> you call it some elegant, like a tasting. I call it a fat snack. <laughs> and um, so maybe a little piece of cheese. I 
always put it on a plate. I always sit down. I breathe. I have some little bits. You know, in the beginning, people stand at the kitchen counter or the fridge and just shove everything in when they open their eating window. And I really encourage people to have it be a pleasurable pause, breathe, eat, and choose foods, again, that will be grounding, that'll quell the ravenous feeling, but will be awakening. You don't want to have your open your eating window and immediately fall asleep. And then if I'm heading to a restaurant, I, this is another tip I always give. I always eat ahead of time. I eat something ahead of time because I don't want to arrive at that restaurant and eat the whole bread basket. So I'll have my olives or some other little fat to chill out, ground myself, have the hunger go away. And then I can order off the menu at a reasonable pace, or I can make my dinner without wanting to eat the whole time I'm cooking. And again, put my dinner on a plate and enjoy it and sit down and listen to a podcast or, you know, have a conversation. So, and I, I've been a vegetarian for over 20 years. Um, I, you know, people think, well, There's a right way, one right way to eat. The right way to eat for me are the food choices that I make. If people go the other far end of being carnivore, I really understand that those choices and those ways of eating work well for that person's body. So I applaud all styles of eating, except for maybe too much sugar. Not a fan. (laughs) Hey guys, I wanted to tell you I'm offering a free weight loss virtual Bible study. Now is the perfect time to focus on understanding true hunger and fullness and learn what the Bible has to say about it. All you have to do is go to ChantelRayway.com slash Bible study. After you sign up, you'll receive a six week Bible study video that you can watch on your own or you can get a small group of people and do it together. That's ChantelRayway.com slash Bible study for your free six week Bible study course. Yeah, I don't think that works well for anyone. I think no, it doesn't. Think sugar does not work out well for anyone. So I love what you just said, because you're going to eat what you want, but you're, you're eating what works for your body. So there are certain things that your body just, if you eat it, it doesn't work well. So obviously if you're listening to this, just because it doesn't work well for, um, Lori, it doesn't mean that it's not going to work well for you, but what are the things that you've kind of eliminated? I, I actually, in my book, I call them red light uh, yellow light and green light foods. So red light means I'm not touching this because I know that my red light foods are, I'm going to be on the, I'm going to be asleep or I'm just going to feel miserable for 24 hours or 48 hours. Yellow light means, Hey, I feel, I don't feel great. I don't feel terrible when I eat that. That's yellow light. Green light means when I eat this, I'm feeling great. Like I, I don't, my body doesn't react to that. So what are those red light foods for you? Your yellow light foods for you? Oh, well, I want to say my green light foods. <laughs> so okay, my green light foods, I crave a big bowl of spinach, arugula, the bitterer, the greens, the better. Like, and everything I eat, I literally fill a bowl with greens and put the other food on top. So I crave potatoes with butter and salt and sour cream and some cheddar cheese. I crave sweet potatoes. I, I, I crave mushrooms. I crave like gooey cheese. Um, so those are the foods that really make me feel well. And I get very excited about, you can tell like a vegetable lasagna. I can't even think of anything more delicious, like veggie tamales. Mm. Okay. So it is a, it's a little bit about 45, 50% carbohydrates is my jam. And that has been reinforced through the DNA tests I've had taken that say, yeah, this is the breakdown. And I don't shy away from healthy fats. Like a good, I like a good chunk of butter, but I'm not supposed to have a ton of fat. So it's about 15, 20% fat, about 30% protein and the rest carbohydrates. The food, and we'll swing to the other end, which are like absolute red lights for me. You know, will I eat a cupcake? Sure, but I'll probably cut it in half and eat half of the half. Not because I'm not allowed. 
it, it just doesn't make me feel good. And usually, you know, I, I like using a cupcake as the example because it's so pretty and it's uh, people make cupcakes for special occasions and the cake is usually delicious and the frosting is usually amazing. It's the prettiness that I enjoy. And, but then it literally, even the thought of it right now makes the top of my head like kind of shoot off <laughs> my shoulders a little bit. So I will order in a restaurant, I'll order the cheese plate for dessert if, if I'm lucky enough to be in a restaurant that has that. Um, so for sure, sweet, sweet, sweet. Mm. And artificial sweeteners? Ab- like, absolutely not. I, I have no interest in those things. And then I think I have no interest in them because I'm clear now about how awful they make me feel. And I'm interested, very, very interested in feeling great all the time. So it takes no willpower for me to not have cashews, green tea is so nauseating to me, quinoa, even a little bit in a salad, I get super, super (laughs) nauseous. Soy products make my joints ache, like puffy, achy. So these foods that I have cut out affect my body negatively by achy joints, bloating. My ankles always bloat. Oh, I get like my toes get fat. My ankles get chubby. I'm like, oh, I ate something. It's just, <laughs> right. And then my gut hurts or my head feels very lightheaded and uncomfortable and kind of off balance. So there are cues and clues that my body gives me now like, that you shouldn't eat that anymore. (laughs) That didn't work for you. Pay attention. And then the yellow, I don't know if I have, do I have yellow things? I'm going to, I'm going to pay attention to what my, the cautionary yellow light items are. Thanks for that tip. I haven't paid attention to that. I'll get back to you. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) What are yours? What are your yellow items? My yellow items are, is dairy. Um, I think that and even dairy, cow's milk dairy, I really do feel pretty bad on, but I'll have mm. like sheep's dairy or goat's dairy. That's a yellow light item for me. So if I have like goat cheese, that seems to do better for me than having, you know, cow's dairy. So it just depends. Mm-hmm. Different times I'm able to have dairy. Sometimes I'm not. For me, gluten is definitely a red light. My husband says, if he wants to put me to sleep, like just give me a little bit of gluten and I'll be like in the bed asleep. So I just, I don't do well with that, but I'll put in a little bit of dairy here and there. And sometimes it's weird. Sometimes I feel fine and other times I feel horrible. So I just have to decide. I never know how I'm going to feel once I have it. And I think it's just dependent on how organic, you know, if it's organic, really, really good, good quality dairy, or if it's like dairy, that's just kind of average, average. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's what makes the big difference for me. So I'm very cautious about it, but for me, you know, more and more I'm realizing sugar, um, you know, I'm constantly looking at my blood glucose level. Like right now it's at 77, which is good. Uh, but I'm obsessed with this now on really looking at what my, my sugar is and my body just doesn't do well with a lot of sugar. So for me, I have to be very, very cognizant of it and I just have to avoid it as much as I possibly can. Yeah. And I do believe like, you know, the more sugar you have, the more sugar you want. So if you can oh, for sure. kind, of get, kind of get it out of your diet and really focus on real whole foods, the less you're going to want to crave it and have it in your, in your life. You know, uh, I have this, I have an idea when you were talking about the yellow, do you think the yellow cautionary ones could be foods that I generally don't even think about? Like I have no pull like people ask me do you eat fruit I'm like "Mm, do I eat fruit I don't eat fruit I wonder why I like plums and blackberries and tangerines and oranges and apple I like that I literally never even think of I I have no they don't call to me it doesn't pull to me so maybe the yellow light ones for me are foods that I enjoy I don't have really an adverse effect but but my body isn't asking for those foods so I might consider that area to be yellow light yeah it's funny because one of the things I like that you said is where you kind of moved from a 
you know, started at eight hours, moved to six hours, and now you've really found your window of that four hours. And for me, you know, six hours is where I kind of maintain a little bit of a heavier weight. So if I stay in that six hour window, I'm just a little bit heavier than I I normally am. And then four hours is kind of where I, if I want to maintain. And then sometimes you'll see me doing a two hour window uh, when I really want to kind of cut back and get into, you know, starting to lose weight. So it, it really just depends on where I'm at, you know, am I five pounds higher than I want to be? Or am I at my ideal weight of where I want to be? Or am I going to Miami next week and I'm going to be in a bikini? So, you know, I might be doing a, a true one meal a day where I might only be eating in a 30 minute window. So it all depends on like, where are you in where you want to be? Am I trying to be a little bit thinner? Am I fine to be, you know, in a little bit heavier state or wherever I'm at? So any other tips on hormones? So if someone said, you know, my horm, like, what can they do to kind of prepare? Let's say they're kind of in that pre-menopause stage. They don't have a ton of symptoms, but they're like, you know, I'm moving into menopause. What are some things that they can do to really prepare them for that? I think that the most important thing to do is a mindset shift that rather than thinking it's all downhill from here, I'm all washed up as a woman. If I could invite all women as you approach 40. My book is called Celebrating Your Vibrant Future, Intermittent Fasting for Women, 44 to Forever. I'm interested in the forever part. And that if you can shift your mindset towards this idea that it's an awakening, it's a, th- it's a big threshold, we are amazing that we can endure this. Truly, I mean, the list of of side effects of menopause are not for the faint hearted. So we're not washed up. We're waking up. I mean, this is this is a time of strength, of beauty, of celebrating our womanhood. And so to to approach menopause with a, a spirit of welcoming will definitely get us through the hardship now about other things that you can do. We talked about nutrition. So all of the areas of our life and our health are kind of up for being tested at this threshold of menopause. Almost every woman I know has had some sort of physical, very serious physical challenge at 40 seven, 48, 49 years old, either the onset of an autoimmune disease, adrenal crash, like serious health scares. It is not a time for the faint of heart. And so not only intermittent fasting, but really looking at every aspect of our wellness, going to see an acupuncturist, addressing a nutrition, have getting some therapy around food addiction and food cravings, like, um, upping our movement. Not everybody has to hit the gym, you know, but can you go to a gentle yoga class? Can you walk with a friend each week? Like really addressing these very important aspects of our lives that reduce stress, get us into optimal health so that when the hormonal changes come and progress, our body, we have fertile soil. So often in our forties, we are tapped out. We've raised children. We've had jobs. We are not sleeping enough. We're stressed to the gills. And that's why I assert that that menopause is even more and more difficult for women in today's society is because we are depleted. So our 40s, I think, are time to really juice ourselves up. And I think one of the biggest tips I can offer is to get a buddy and talk with your girlfriends about the onset of menopause so that it is something that's welcome and you can look at all the aspects of your lives, stress, movement, food, overall health, intermittent fasting, and how can you elevate this fertile soil and pause and so the 
lowering stress, you know, cortisol and insulin, it doesn't allow for insulin to go, but the circulating insulin stays high and then the fat burning stops, the fat storage continues. So we want to get cortisol low, insulin low, and tap into our fat. Another aspect is with this link of adrenal exhaustion and menopause is that I learned that when the ovaries stop releasing eggs and stop making estrogen, the body's like, hmm, where am I going to make estrogen? And the next place in your body that estrogen is created is in the adrenal glands. If the adrenals are shot, it's like, now what do we do? So that was my situation. So menopause was happening. No more estrogen being made in the, in the ovaries. Went to my adrenals. My adrenals were absolutely blown out. And so then the next place that estrogen is made is in our fat cells. Our fat cells are little estrogen factories and storage containers. <laughs> so my body packed on fat to like, like nobody's business. And so if we can get the adrenals healthy, lowering stress, now's the time. Now's the time to do that. <laughs> Hey guys, one of the things that will take your weight loss to the next level is coaching. You can either work one-on-one -on -one with me or one of our certified private coaches. If you'd like, you can schedule your free call. It's a 10 minute strategy call just to see if coaching is gonna really take you to the next level. Don't just take my word for it. Listen to this recent review, a happy coaching client sent in. Thanks so much for your help and guidance. I never could have done it without you. The other thing is listening to the audiobook. Listening to the audiobook and getting the video course that I've done, people are seeing dramatic results. If you just listen to the audiobook 30 minutes a day, over and over and over again, and get the video course, go to ChantelRayway.com and check out the video course. You won't be sorry you did. Is there anything else that you can think of that I haven't asked you already that you would say, you know, I just wish that, you know, several years ago, I would have known this. Huh. I, I wish people would relate to or think of intermittent fasting, not as a thing to do or like a plan to get a particular result. Now, do we want to be lean and strong and flexible and vibrant and look good and feel good? Yes. Does that mean that our bodies should not be carrying around a giant surplus of fat that's meant to be a fuel source? Yes. But I wish that the context for intermittent fasting could be that this is how our bodies are designed. Our bodies are not designed to eat all the time. I am going with the flow, the design of my human body by putting it in a state of repair each day. And then I'm enjoying delicious food. So it's this elegant dance of fasting, burning fat, and then eating well and eating the food <coughs> my body loves. Bless you. Oh, Bless you. Bless you. <laughs> so I think that my, my wish, my desire would be that fasting could become so natural for each woman that she, it just kind of falls into the background. It's not on your mind so much. It's just what you do. You just naturally do. You wake up in a fasted state, you go work out, you go about your day, you're productive and clear. Eating is often the future. You're, you're thinking about the delicious foods you're gonna eat. You can't wait, but it's not, you're not fixated on it. And then you enjoy your food and it becomes a most natural way of living as opposed to a diet plan that you have to subscribe to. You're, we are doing the, it's a huge gift. We are doing the thing that our bodies are designed to do. And that's really inspiring and motivating. <laughs> I think one thing you said that I think we need to hone in on one last time is that you said that, you know, at one point your, your pants and things fit better but the scale didn't move as fast as you wanted. And I think that's such a big piece of intermittent fasting that people can't get past because they look on the scale, but it's like everything's fitting better. People are saying, oh, you look thinner, but the scale isn't moving. Talk about mm -hmm. that for a minute. Well, in my coaching, I, ha I just did it last night in my, in my 
my series, my group program, is I have everybody make, draw a circle and then make as many pieces of the pie as you would like and put the scale in one of the pieces of the pie. The scale is not the whole pie. <laughs> and each individual gets to decide what is it that you're measuring to gauge whether or not your body, you're successful with your intermittent fasting. Um, it could be get a DEXA scan and see the visceral fat coming off your organs. It could be that you measure your waist. You don't even have to use a measuring tape. You can use a string. You don't even have to know the number. It can be comparing photos. It can be having a pair of goal pants that they fit better and better and better. So all those, it could be sleep, it could, it, any factors in that pie, but the most important thing is that the scale is not the whole pie. And so with intermittent fasting, the body is 100% guaranteed you can count on that your hormones are balancing and healing, your gut is in repair, every aspect, your hair, your fingernails, your, your skin, everything is in repair when you're in a fasted state. And one of the most important things to remember is I know we want the fat off our rear end and our thighs and our belly to go away first, but the body prioritizes the visceral fat. So visceral fat is fat that's glommed onto our organs, our heart, our liver, our kidneys, our pancreas, our lungs, and we're not supposed to have fat on those organs. And so when we start intermittent fasting, the body is like, get that fat off those organs. And that may not have the scale move, but that is contributing to your overall wellness and longevity, like immeasurably. So there's this idea of body recomposition that as we're fasting, the HGH hormone increases, which increases muscle density and bone density. We want bone density as an aging woman. And that kind of balances the scales in terms of bone density and muscle weight are going up, but fat weight is going down. And so the actual scale that we stand on may not reflect as much of a number change as we demand because of the body reconfiguration. So I could sometimes, I know this sounds insane, but other people feel it too. Sometimes I could like feel myself shrinking. Like I could feel my skin tightening. I went through phases with my fast. I liked that phase. I'm like, I tightening up, but the scale isn't moving. So I had to deal with the mental anguish there and, and deal with myself and my mindset around why is that number on this plastic box on the bathroom floor, more important than how I feel. I feel in my clothing, I'm getting smaller and tighter and stronger and juicier. Like that is the most important thing, not the number on the scale. So if people, if people are affected by the number on the scale, sometimes they're like, well, it motivates me. Well, I think that type of motivation can be actually demoralizing. Like if you read the number and you have to work really hard to be really good today, that that is stressful. <laughs> so if the scale actually makes you feel badly about yourself, put it away. Have those other areas of the pie be what your focus, that, have that be the scoreboard that you're paying attention to so that you can feel motivated and inspired and confident and not beat yourself up. Awesome. <laughs> so body reconfiguration. <laughs> awesome. Well, this has been amazing. Thank you so much for being on the show. Tell listeners where they can find you, where they can follow you and tell us more about your coaching. Thank you. Thank you so much, Chantel. So my business is fastforwardwellness.com. I have one-on-one -on -one personal coaching as well as group programs. So I lead, I feel like I was a Zoom pioneer two years ago, leading my programs live on Zoom. And I used to have to teach everybody how to do it. Now I don't have to teach anyone anymore. So I have clients in Scotland and England and France and Ukraine and Japan, New Zealand, Australia, US and Canada. So we need you know, all the countries are welcome. And I work people through several different programs. The first one is Fast with Lori Express, which is just a three, three session program to get people solid in their practice. I, and that was inspired because so many people were coming to me saying that they'd been intermittent fasting for a while, but they were doing it wrong. Like it, and so let's get people on a solid foundation with enough information and motivated motivation and inspiration to keep 
going. So fast forward wellness.com. And then my book is um, celebrating your vibrant future intermittent fasting for women 44 to forever. And that's on Amazon. And um, it's, it's actually doing very, very well. I'm, I'm excited to be in the top percentage of books sold on Amazon and more and more women are discovering it's a workbook so it gives you the basics of intermittent fasting it's divided in three sections it's the fast foundation then fast forward is a 90 day workbook and then fast forever is how to keep how to keep it going so that's my work awesome it's a real joy. this has been great if you have a question that you want answered go to questions at chantalrayway.com we'll see you next time stay tuned bye-bye for now have a great day this has been a sempronto media production